Bruchem Aboyim. Thank you for coming. The topic today um, will be on something that is very common and that we all deal with in one form or another. Uh, it's fear. And again, fear that connects also with worry. Uh, Webster defines fear as an unpleasant, sometimes strong emotion caused by an anticipation or awareness of danger or anxious concern. It's interesting that when we define fear, we say that fear is either to either a person for fight or flight, is the common term, but it also deals with motivation and innovation. So like all things in life, when we think of fear, we think of negativity, and we're going to deal with it on three levels that of the negative, that of the positive, and then its connection to God and religion. So fear can be paralyzing, like a deer in the headlights. Um, a person can be afraid to the point of he knows he should move, he knows he should act, uh, he just doesn't. A person can, be, can see a punch coming at his face and see it and easily avoid it. He's just so paralyzed by the fear that it hits him only because he can't move. Somehow his body freezes. Um, there is a condition called OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. And basically it centers around fear. Fear of the unknown, fear of death, fear of pain, fear of chemicals, disease. And uh, it's crippling. It's absolutely crippling. And what's interesting is, is they're right. Life can be very dangerous. But this, is, again, will t connect to religion in, in a little bit. But if a person lives that way, it makes life unbearable. Because everything that you do, you're in trepidation. So even though a person needs to be careful, and this is where fear becomes a positive, but anything to excess, as the Rambam says, is a negative. So the fact that a person is too careful, too concerned. A person, it's interesting, the American Indian, Indian, where they were decimated not by war. They were decimated by disease that the Europeans brought that they had no, um, they had no ability to, over, to overcome. They had no immune system to it. And sometimes if you're too careful, too clean, so to speak. It's not that you're supposed to eat dirt, but at the same time, that get, working up an immune system, being around the world and everything in it makes you stronger, not weaker. In fact, when a person gets an immunization, a vaccination, they give you a little bit of the disease and you build up an immunity to it. So being too careful makes you actually, instead of more healthy, less healthy. So many times... Um, the greatest torture a person can have also is mental torture. Uh, just the thought of fear, the fear of being hurt, is already being hurt. You've gone through the whole thing. And it's interesting that people get ready for pain or, or bad times. They prepare for it. You know, just let it happen. You know, let it be a surprise. Because when a person, it's like, it's like getting your house ready for someone who you hate that's going to be around. Don't be home. Leave the house messy. And if he leaves, that's okay. You know, if you have a good time coming, then get ready and look forward to it. And even then, sometimes we build it up so much that a good time becomes less. Truth of the matter is, deal with life as it comes. You know, it's an interesting thing. One of the fears are phobias. Some people are afraid of driving. Some people are going over a bridge, uh, being in a plane. But, but the truth of the matter is, that part of the way that they, you overcome these phobias is just by doing them. Uh, how many times people fly? Truth of the matter, it's safer driving a car than it is flying in a plane. Probably the other way around. It's safer flying in a plane than it is driving a car. But we're so used to driving a car, we never think about it. Not only do we not think about it, we do everything. We listen to a radio, we've been put on makeup, people are reading, texting, I mean, everything. And, and, and they're driving, you know, doing 70 miles an hour. I saw a guy go on the expressway with his newspaper in front of him. <laughs> I mean, you see the whole thing. And yet it's, it's extremely dangerous. Most of us just don't think of it that way. And we've all flown, even though people that are white-knuckled do it. 
and some, it works. Because if you condition yourself, now I have a phobia, I'm afraid of heights. And it's interesting that it taught me a great lesson for life and for religion. Um, if I get on a step ladder, I get the bends. And yet, I had a friend who bugged me for years. At age 35, I began skiing, cross, down, downhill skiing. And 8,000 feet, 12,000 feet. And I kept telling him, you're crazy. How am I going to go skiing? Anyways, I finally went and I became an avid skier. In fact, a black diamond skier. And the way I got around it is I came to the realization, when I ski, I only look at three feet in front of me. That's it. I don't care what it is. And I never stop it at the top of a run. I always come over the top. I never stop and look down. Because if I stop and look down, I'm taking my skis off and going home. But if I go over the top, then I'm into it already, and it's somehow easier. Now, the chairs are still a challenge, but still, the, I can ski the runs. Because I only deal with three feet in front of me, and that's all I deal with in life. Three feet in front of me. And three feet you can handle, because you see it right there. Don't get too far ahead of yourself. You know, the... You know, it's interesting that good judgment, you know, one of the fears we have is fear of failure. And it, it, it really petrifies people. But good judgment comes from experience. And experience comes from bad judgment. You learn nothing from success. So you fail. So what? Learn something from it. And from that failure comes great success. Henry Ford went bankrupt five times. Hershey from Hershey, Pennsylvania went bankrupt five times. Failure is not a problem. Get up and keep going. And that becomes the key. So fa fear of failure should be that which propels you, not which defeats you and cripples you. Now, one of the problems you also have is, again, there are many illnesses that are connected with, with fear. Um, and not only that, when you're, when you're afraid, what happens? You get a rush of adrenaline, which is good for the moment. But then it drains you. And after that, you're weak. So it really does. It's really a negative. It's good for the moment. It's interesting, great sports figures, what happens to them is where everyone else panics, the game slows down for them. And that's what makes them great. They see everything because everything slows down. That's what we need to do, treat, try to teach ourselves not to panic. Because in the end, it'll be what it will be. And if we slow it down and we, and, and we deal with it, life gets much easier to deal with. You know, anything that doesn't kill you, Will make you stronger. So what fear should do, the positive end should teach you to motivate and innovate. The solution to fear is good preparation. You know, when you have a kid going to school, if he doesn't know the topic, he spends the whole time in class hoping the teacher doesn't see him. He spends that whole hour hoping he's invisible. You know, hope she doesn't call on me. But the kid who knows it, he's got his hand up, he's bouncing around, he wants to be called. And being in class is fun. And when he's called, he's, he's in ecstasy. But the kid who doesn't prepare, it's a nightmare. You know, you know, it's an interesting thing. They say that as you get older, time moves quicker. It does not move quicker. They think kids, for kids, it moves slowly. For adults, you get older. No. Ask a kid what happened during his, his summer break. Was it quick or slow? Like lightning, it's done. The school year is slow because he's not prepared. He's not having a good time. and He's being tested all the time. A kid who prepares and goes into class enjoys school much more. So what fear should do is help us to prepare. In our country today, there's fear of a terrorist attack. That's great. Why? Because we prepare for it. Therefore, they stop attacks from happening. They stopped 60 terrorist attacks last year. Why? Because we're prepared. Because people are looking for it. All police agencies, FBI, whatever, they are looking for these type of things, which protects us. If we don't have that fear of what could happen, then we would walk around totally out to lunch, and then we get attacked. So fear has its positives. Now, on a religious level, that Baal Shem Tov says that a man who has fear dies many deaths. A man who puts his faith in God only dies once. So basically, your faith should be stronger than your fear. And that becomes important. If you believe in God, then what is there to fear? We all have a destiny. Now, it's interesting. For the most part, when you run away from things, 
and try to avoid them, what you're running towards is your destiny. That direction you're running, what you think is away from, is towards. You cannot run away from destiny. You can change it sometimes. A famous story told to Rabbi Akiva. He was told that his daughter would die on her wedding day. And on her wedding day, she lived through the wedding day. Rabbi Akiva said to her, did you do something special last night? And she says, no, but he says, it must have been something. And she's, because they woke up, when he, she woke up in the morning, women used to wear hats with big pins. So she put her hat into, on the wall and stuck the pin through the wall. In the morning, they found a poisonous snake. She had put the pin right through its head. So there was some danger there. So Rikiva asked her, what did you do yesterday that was different? She couldn't. Then he pushed her. She said, well, at the wedding, everybody was busy. And I saw there was a poor man who needed food. I took care of that. And he smiled and said, that changed your destiny. So we do have the ability to do that through prayer and through good deeds to make things better. But to be petrified, if you believe in God, God will be your protector. You don't need to worry about it. And again, as we have our classes with death, death is not the worst thing. Death is the reward for everything that we do. But it says there's a Pusik that says, the verse that says, Akal bide shemayim, chutz meir shemayim. Everything is in the hands of heaven except the fear of heaven. What does that mean? It means that God owns everything. But God does not own fear. Because what does God fear? Nothing. He's God. So the only thing you can give God as a gift is fear or the word I like better is awe of God. But being in awe or having respect, that fear of God, is the gift that we give God. Now, why do we have to have that? Because when you serve God, God is like a fire. You can get close, but only so close. If you get too close, you'll be burned, like Nadav and Avil, that are burned by the heavenly fire. So a person has to have two wings of a bird. There's love, so there's fear, love, and awe. Love is in the center. Fear comes from, from, from ignorance, not knowing something. You fear the unknown. Love comes from knowledge, and awe comes from an immense amount of knowledge. A person needs to have both to balance out his flight to come close to God. Now, it's interesting. It's a beautiful thing. So, one has to overcome his fear to serve God, and hopefully transfer it into awe with a desire to want to serve God. But the beauty of Yira Shemayim, is not just having a fear, which many people do. They serve God out of fear because of a punishment. That should not be the way you serve God. Serve God out of love. So what does it mean, fear of heaven? That God has so much love for us that he worries for us. He fears for us just like a parent for a child. And that's the way that we should have our relationship with God. To know that God worries about us just like we worry about our children. So, everything is in the hands of heaven except the fear of heaven means that God worries about us just like a father or a parent or a mother and father worry about their child. Again, so what we need to do is remember that fear is not a negative if we use it properly. And to know that all we have to fear again is fear itself. And if a person realizes that there's a God in the world who directs everything that you do just like the, the parent who's behind the child, who's always there to protect, God is there to protect you. Put one foot in front of the other, look into the Torah, that book of instruction, the instruction manual that God has given us. And when you do that, we can walk through this minefield that we call life. And it's a walk in the park. Because it tells us exactly where to walk and to put our feet. With the help of God, we should not fear, we should just love Him. And in this way, find joy in life, which is the essence of all that we do. God bless. Have a great Shabbos. Thank you for coming.